a ton of confidence. I, I think we feel really confident going on the road. Um, you know, we feel like we're, we're battle tested. We feel like we've won in a lot of different ways, been in a lot of different types of games already in, uh, in just the first part of this season. Um, you know, obviously this one, this one had uh, a little extra special meaning, um, you know, just uh, being able to come in and get a win here against a, a great opponent, you know, in a very, very tough venue. Um, and just knowing that these guys are, are I think they're always going to be in the hunt. So are the Saints. What did we learn about this New Orleans team yesterday? Watching this game, they, here's another game that swung dramatically at the end of the half and the start of the second half. You get the fumble, mm -hmm. turns into a touchdown, then they go for it on fourth down to start the second half because the Vikings wanted to be aggressive, and that converts into a, another field goal. Um, but but in watching New Orleans, what I what I like about this is is they always go into the game with a, a significant plan. They've got a ton of stuff that they're going to do. But then there's a willingness by Drew Brees to just do what works. It's not about having the flash plays. He, they, they don't have to do that. So Kamara, uh, Kamara gets the ball 20 times. You know, he had seven catches, 13 touches. Mm -hmm. Ingram, he touches the ball 16 times. The willingness to go to the backs, the willingness to, to do things that I think historically they maybe didn't have the patience to do, to me, is really encouraging. And then defensively, when you look at Minnesota's last drive, it, it must have drove you crazy, Chris, how long it took for them to get down the field to score that, that, those final points. That's, that's a really good indication of, of the development of New Orleans' defense. They don't give up a quick score there, so it takes so much time off the clock. That, that's a huge plus, too. So there, there's a lot of things to like about New Orleans, but the biggest thing for me is their willingness to do whatever it takes and, and not have to win with the flashy plays. That, yeah, that's th th that's a, a huge credit to Drew Brees, taking what the defense is going to give them, letting the game play out. But Dennis Allen, that defense, since the first game, since the first pass against Ryan Fitzpatrick in Tampa Bay, they give up a long touchdown to start the season to Sean uh, Jackson. And then since then, they have steadily just improved their defense. The two turnovers that they created, their secondary, they got 14 points off those turnovers. So not only are we starting to learn about this defense, what they can't do, what they can't. You can see the overall growth of the secondary. From a wide receiver standpoint, they had a negative impact on this game. Stephon Diggs, the shallow cross, it's man to man. He stops running, forces Kirk, Kirk Cousin, throws it in front of him. P.J. Williams goes the other way. That's seven points right there. Adam Thielen, we throw him a bubble screen. We are up 13 to 10 in the red zone. He decides to cut inside and go inside the numbers, which you can't go inside on a bubble screen. He does not change the football. The football gets contacted. They go the other way. They get another touchdown. That's 14 points. In a game like this, you are not going to recover. The other thing, the third thing from um, the Saints that I'm learning is in the three wins on the road, look at the places they won. In Atlanta, in Baltimore, in Minnesota, all very, very tough places. It lets you know not only they not a just a, a mentally physical football, mentally and a physically a very um, a team that will respond to those tough circumstances. So you got to be pleased with what we've seen, and I'll stop rambling. See, <laughs> see on the but and on bravo. the well, now I'm going to I'm going to make you talk fantastic. again. Actually, on the on the feel and play, I forget which coach it was that would say to you, "Where do you think they went?" Right, like when you guys wide receivers doing the jitterbug stuff around mm -hmm. the, on that play. Well, on this play, actually, break this one down since we're running the video of it. Why is this Diggs' fault? Well, for one, they're in man-to-man -man across the board. The quarterback thinks if they're in man-to-man, -man, you're going to continue to run. Diggs did not give him any indicator that he was going to stop. That's why I tell fans all the time, 60% of the interceptions are the wide receiver's fault. So he should have kept going. The worst it would have been is the incomplete. But he gave false information to the quarterback, forced a turnover. Diggs catches the bubble. He's got blockers outside. He decides to go inside. That smoke and that heat is inside. Those Defenders are going to be coming, swarming to the football. So both the wide receivers making negative plays and had an impact on the game. Well, that and that is it's one of the reasons I like watching football with you on Sundays. Is and one day Coach Me and Jeannie will join us. And Jenna, your invitation. Always Everybody, extended. you in the uh, back, part, holding part that piece of paper. Of, but the is, is watching with you. See, it is a reminder of how much of this game is avoiding the violence of it. 
Like watching wide receivers who know how to get down, when to get down, what to do is an enormous part of at least how you consume football. And so when Adam Thielen makes the decision to go inside instead of outside, like he can do that, but he's got to know the violence is coming. And he's got to know I have to be particularly safe with the football in this spot. And he wasn't. And Thielen's been unbelievable this year. He's on a record setting pace, by the way, yesterday, targeted seven times, seven catches, 100 yards again, and a touchdown. But this this was a play that the guys help us coming game. inside. You cannot go inside, and if you do go inside, you got to put two hands on the football. You just don't expect the Vikings receivers, who have been phenomenal, to have a negative impact on the game. And both of them, Diggs with the shallow cross, Thielen catching the bubble screen, deciding one on one on the defensive back, I'm going to go inside that fumble there, turned into seven points for the Saints the other way. And it's a lot like the stretch running game where you cut the backside guy free and you tell the running back if you decide to cut back it's buyer beware you you need to know what you're getting into the frustrating thing on the shallow cross is it was obviously man-to-man -man defense he talked to the wide receivers about green grass grow yes grow, green uh, so if you don't see another defender a zone defender there you're going to continue on and then after the ball's intercepted he stops running look chase it you don't know what's going to happen you don't know if he's going to get pulled up Typically, the most dangerous player after a pick is the intended receiver yes. because mm -hmm. nobody knows where he is. But in this play, he just stops running. I'm not saying it would have made a difference, but we'll never know if it'll make a difference because he, he stops. This is such a key game for the Saints. To win this game on the road when Drew Brees throws for 120. And I know you, you're complimenting Drew Brees for t taking the game as it came. Yes. But if you told me going into it, Drew Brees is going to throw for 120 yards. I just said, well, the Vikings are, the Saints are about to have their second loss of the year. The Vikings are going to have one of their best wins of the year. And when they've got, the Saints have the Rams coming up next week. Now all of a sudden, if they win that game, they're the, at that moment, the best record in the NFC with that dead tiebreaker against the Rams. Like, for them to find a way to win this game, and your point about their defense, weeks one through three, this defense has given up 34 and a half points a game over 400 yards per game. Weeks four through eight now, the last five weeks, 20 points per game. They have six takeaways. They gave away. They gave up ten pass touchdowns first three games of the year. They've given up five since then. Much like the Chiefs, they don't have to have a top five defense. But if they have an average defense with Drew Brees playing at this level, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram doing what they can do, this is a team that can make the Super Bowl. Like if if the defense is just almost as good as it was last year, the offense can power them. We talked so much about how the Rams are so good because they're such a complete team on both sides of the ball. But there are a few other teams who are like that as well. The Saints are slowly turning into that team. I, we asked, we talked about this in week two. I said, what's the only thing that's going to hold the Saints back? And we said, well, obviously their defense. It doesn't look like that's the case now. The one thing I worry about is Michael Thomas being the predominant pass catcher. Now, I understand Kamara coming out of the backfield tonight, but there are other wide receivers. Because if I clamp down on Kamara, say I double him and double Mike Thomas, who's going to make that next play? Is the rookie um, out of UCF, the wide receiver they spent the first round pick, is he going to be that guy? Another receiver has to emerge. Teddy Ginn out for the season on injured reserve. They got to have another guy emerge as a pass catcher. And, and defensively was encouraging, especially that last drive for them to make Minnesota take as much time off the clock as they mm -hmm. did. And, and with a lot of these teams that have high-powered offenses, if you can at least make the other team go the long, hard way, then you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be in a good situation in, in most games. Now, the fact that they had to trade for a cornerback tells you that, that there's real concerns mm -hmm. in the secondary. And at some point, that's, that's going to continue to get exploited. So it's, it's how quickly they can coordinate the pressure packages, how sound... They can be across the board, and if they just make people earn each one of the touchdowns as opposed to big plays. Or the yeah, the Saints have done a good job as far as getting information on Eli Apple when they traded for him. He's got three other guys on the, from the Ohio State team that he was on. He's got Michael Thomas on the offensive side. He's got the safety Coleman who was there before him, and he's also got Lattimore and Von Bell. All of those guys played on that national championship team for Ohio State, so hoping that some of that being familiar with guys on the team helps emerge Eli Apple to be that first round talent that the Giants thought he was. All right, coach, stick around. Did you have something?